A couple of years ago, I did a video on the quiet quitting phenomenon, which was just Zoomer speak for only doing the requirements of your job and not going above and beyond for no reward. Quiet quitting is one of those things that Zoomers act like they just invented, when it's actually been around for quite a while, just under other names like work to rule. Well, there's an inverse effect happening in employment right now called quiet firing. It works much the same way. When you get quiet fired, you don't actually get fired, because that can actually be an annoying process to go through for the employer. Instead, you get transferred to a different project or department that you don't really have any interest in and that has no path forward for promotions or raises. The company does this in the hopes that you'll simply voluntarily quit your job rather than making them go through the hassle of firing you. And it can be quite the hassle. If you're in a union job, that means that management is bound by strict rules regarding how a firing can actually occur, generally with quite a lot of leeway in favor of the employee. The upside is that this means employees are protected, but the downside is that bad employees are very hard to get rid of. If you have a more professional level job, generally your contract will have some sort of severance that the employer needs to pay. Plus there's the associated cost of bringing in somebody new to continue your projects, or if there's a lot of layoffs, the cost of closing down office space as the company downsizes. Now, all of these issues had to be dealt with before too, but the internet age and social media has brought with it an additional negative, going viral for firing your workers. That is the ultimate bad press move in the modern era. For example, the CEO of Better.com fired over 900 employees over a Zoom call, and the company's public image has never really recovered. Or there was the case of Hypersocial's CEO who posted a selfie of him crying, saying that because of his bad decision, he was forced to lay people off and he felt terrible about it. He did not get the sympathy he expected from the general public. Some of these events are going viral from the employee's point of view too. The entire internet was up in arms for like a day when this woman released a TikTok of her layoff interview from Cloudflare. Hey Brittany. Hi. Yes, I'm so sorry. Uh, my name's Rosie. I'm just uh, joining the call. Um, nice to meet you, I'm on the HR team. Thanks for meeting with me uh, and Rosie. Um, we have an important meeting today. Uh, we finished our evaluations of 2023 performance. This is where you have not met Cloudflare expectations for performance. We've decided to part ways with you. Yeah, I'm gonna stop you right there. Sure. Um, so I started August 25th. I've been on a three month ramp and then it was three weeks of December and then a week of Christmas. And then here we are. Um, I have had the highest activity amongst my team. Um, since I've started, I have had three contracts out, done a really great job managing my deals up until the very end that decided not to close last minute. Um, so I don't think that that makes a lot of sense for me in my Cloudflare journey here so far. Yeah, I would love like an explanation that makes sense. 100%. Um, I won't be able to go into specifics for numbers. Wait, why though? I just started, I've been working extremely hard just because I haven't closed anything that has nothing to do with my performance on a three month ramp with just one month with two ho major holidays in the middle. I don't think that has anything to do with why I should be let go, if that makes sense. So I really need an answer and an explanation as to why Brittany Peach is getting let go, not why Cloudflare decided to hire too many people and are now actually realizing that they can't afford this many people and they're letting that go. If that's the real answer, I would rather just you tell me that instead of making up some bullshit and telling me that right before I lose my job from someone that I've never met before, if you can respect that. Yeah, I can totally respect that. And I don't think Dom or myself today is going to give you any clarity or answers that's going to um, meet the expectations that you're communicating to us, Brittany. So I can't speak to... So if, am I getting let go for no reason? If you guys can't give me a reason? I'm happy to follow up with you separately to give you the data that was calibrated. I'll need to speak with um, revenue leadership specifically to see if we can get that for you. But Dom and can I you share that with that me now? In our meeting. I cannot share that with you right now, unfortunately. Yeah, it's understandable how you feel and your frustration. Cannot stress that enough. I have been working extremely hard. I, sorry, I just knew that this meeting was coming after knowing what's been happening with my peers and how extremely frustrated and upset everyone is. 
Um, I know you guys must not be able to understand that given the, in the positions that you are in and it must be very easy for you to just have these little 10 minute, 15 minute meetings, tell someone that they're fired, completely wreck their whole life and then that's it with no explanation. That's extremely traumatizing for people, if you can imagine that. Now, I don't know about you, but frankly, I don't get her position here. One, this isn't like you can roll a 20 on charisma and talk about a firing you. This is happening whether you like it or not. Two, you know that bit where she talks about not closing deals? Since I've started, I have had three contracts out, done a really great job managing my deals up until the very end that decided not to close last minute. Yeah, that's your poor performance, lady. The three month ramp up wasn't to hold your hand. It was for you to start showing results and you didn't. And three, yeah, you made Cloudflare look like shit and they had to put out a statement and issue you an apology, but you're still fired and now you're radioactive too. Do you think any company will ever hire you now that you have the reputation of torturing your employer online with a viral TikTok? I know I sure as hell wouldn't. Another TikTok went viral around the same time. This time a woman recorded her reaction to getting laid off from Discord. Today we are making the unfortunate and difficult decision to reduce the size of Discord's workforce by 17%. This means we are saying goodbye to 170 of our talented colleagues. By 10.30 a.m. Pacific time, everyone will receive an email. In your email, you will learn whether or not your employment has been impacted by this reduction in force. I find out if I'm laid off in 20 minutes. Breakup text through email. Yeah, I got the email. Holy shit, dude. I am laid off. Fuck. Oh my god. Uh, oh. Wow. Her name is Chloe Shi, living in LA, and her LinkedIn says that she's a content creator and product lead. I assume she has like a YouTube channel or a Twitch channel on the side, but what kind of product leading did she do for Discord? Well, she's got some of those day in the life of a product manager videos on her YouTube channel. Yeah, I covered this phenomenon earlier too, where attractive people, generally women, working in tech, release videos about how laid back their workday is and how awesome their jobs are. These videos don't really tell the specifics of Chloe's job, but she seems to be doing a lot of dicking around and not a lot of working in these videos. However, there was another woman who posted her layoff video, this time from Google. She also went viral too, because of course she did. And it turns out her job at Google consisted of eating, snacking, and vibing. Back with another realistic day in the life at Google Seattle. I get to the office at around 6 a.m. to beat the traffic and just get a nice workout in. At around 7 a.m., I'm getting ready at the locker room. We're getting breakfast at this really cute cafe at 8 a.m. Got some crepes, iced Americano, which is so good. And at around 8.20, I got to work. I usually get a snack at around 10 a.m. And today, I forgot a charging cable, so I went to the vending machine to get one. And 11.30 is usually when I eat lunch. I got a whole hodgepodge of things, including pizza, and this is the view that I like to eat with. And at 12 o'clock, I get some more caffeine and just spend the afternoon doing some more work. I like to de-stress at the end of the day and today I booked a massage appointment so I have that for an hour and then go home at 5.30. Big life update. I got laid off yesterday. <laughs> yeah, when the fat needs to be trimmed, we all knew these are the jobs that were going to cut first. Hey there, this is a quick intercut from Editing Dev. On Chloe's YouTube channel, about a month before she got laid off, I found this video. I have to leave my job. Sorry, Discord. I am not quitting. I'm going on leave, but I will say that everyone I know that has gone on leave quits after like a month or two of coming back because they've gone through some sort of change in perspective. And I'm not saying that I'm going through that right now, but I am saying that there's a lot of perspective happening. You know, I'm 30 now. In my age bracket, I feel like a lot of people around me are going on leave and it's actually not as uncommon as I thought. Like I have a PM friend who just took, I think two months of medical leave, came back and quit immediately. I also have like five friends in design product, data, who took sabbatical, like literally just quit just to heal and recover from burnout. And I have this C-suite friend who was a CPO and CEO, and she just quit her startup life to heal from all the work trauma. I am taking leave from work, specifically caretaker leave. I get two months of paid leave, very, very wonderful, but I heard Netflix gets one year of paid leave or something, which is crazy to me. For me, it's a pretty tough matter that I have, so I'm gonna keep most of that private. I told my manager about a month before I had to take leave and honestly, I was so scared because I don't know, I just feel like I could get rejected for these types of things. There's a lot of fear in taking a break from work. It's just scary to take breaks. It's scary to ask for PTO and vacation. It's scary to have that impact your performance or be seen as a slacker. Well, there you go, dude. She said to Discord, um, hey, I don't want to work right now. And Discord said, sounds good to me. <laughs> like, what do you expect? You're not working. Of course you're going to be fired.
And then there's a similar video from two years earlier, where she quit her job at TikTok. Now, to be fair, she wasn't laid off on this one. But this does seem to be a person who is, you know, hopping around because she's wearing out her welcome at these companies. This seems to be something happening all over big tech right now. Twitch announced that they're axing a shit ton of their staff, which comes as no surprise to me. Twitch used to be the premier streaming site, and they've destroyed themselves with their own retardation. Google's laying off workers, Amazon is, Duolingo, and of course Cloudflare and LinkedIn and Discord. The same thing's happening in the gaming space too. Blizzard layoffs, Eidos layoffs, Xbox layoffs. The gaming side of the tech layoffs conversation deserves its own video, because one reason for this is that these companies just aren't making games people want to play, which is its own deeper discussion. But another reason is shared with the wider tech conversation. During the COVID lockdowns, a ton of industries took huge hits. Stuff like restaurants or tourism or going to the theater or live entertainment. But anything that could be done from home enjoyed a massive boom. Netflix, buying new big TVs, buying new computers, video games, social media, ordering stuff online. These industries made insane amounts of money and these companies started hiring tons of people, many of them also working from home. But lockdowns are over now. The COVID boom didn't last in these sectors, and now all of these companies are scrambling to try and become profitable again in the face of all of their users going outside. What you'll notice, though, is that it's generally newer companies that are currently going viral for their massive layoffs and cutbacks. Older companies, presumably with people who have a lot more experience under their belts, they're employing that quiet firing thing instead. Anytime an article about a company says restructuring or reassignment instead of layoffs or firings, quiet firing is generally what's going on. Now, of course, not every reassignment is a quiet firing. Maybe you're actually a great worker and the company doesn't want to lose you, but they have no work for you right now. So you're being shuffled around for a little bit until a project opens up. That's possible. The reason all of those mice experiment women got fired was because they brought no real value to the companies they worked for. They had no indispensable skills or education, and whatever real work they did could clearly be replaced, so it was. Perhaps the worst of all is that they were totally blind to their own uselessness. If they had real skills and they were fired, those skills would get them into a different position in the industry. In fact, that's probably why they torched their own reps going viral online by throwing their employers under the bus. It was a last ditch move by people who have no other value. Now, in case you're thinking that I'm totally just deep throating big business here, no, not at all. I'm simply describing the practical dynamic that's at play. If you are replaceable, you will be replaced. If you want to be paid more, you need to be more valuable. And the final TikTok of the day should help illustrate what I mean. When asked to come in for an 8 a.m. meeting, my Gen Z new hire said, Ugh, sorry, I can't make it. I have a workout class. Should this be allowed? My visceral reaction was, are you fucking kidding me? No, fully, like anger, typing this out. I was like, please. Like my hand's shaking and it's not from the caffeine. You just started this job. I don't give a flying shit about your workout class. Also, an 8 a.m. workout class is too late. Work out at 6, yeah. maybe 7. Hi. Yeah, Natalie. So um, we can talk about this more later, but I'm going to address this now. It was made very clear during the interview process that the working hours for this position is between 9 to 5 p.m. Eastern time and I am on Eastern time. I made that very clear with HR because I have commitments outside of work. I go to the gym, I work out because I care about my health. Sure, I can make a sacrifice to go to an 8 a.m. meeting had I known at least a week before that I needed to go at 8 a.m., not a day before. Also, my workout class starts at 7.30, not at 8, but I didn't know that I needed to tell you that. Okay, let's just say I skipped the gym. Two things. When can I expect you to reimburse me for my class? And two, are you going to be paying me from 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. or at the very least, let me leave at 4 p.m.? Natalie, if your answer to both of those are no, then there's no discussion needed. I will see you at 9 o'clock today. This one sounds like it's a quiet quitting thing, though it went viral just last week. It's not from that 2022 trend. The point's the same, though. If he's an hourly worker and he's not getting paid for coming in early, then why the fuck would you expect him to? His time isn't free, and it's not his boss's business what he does when he's off the clock. I know that progressives are coming out 100% on the side of the employee here, but they had their own part to play and how permissive this has become, too. Every time a leftoid said that workplaces have to fire workers for their off-the-clock activities or their social media posts about some political position they disagreed with, they helped normalize corporations policing their workers 24-7. They wanted to wield that power like a weapon against their enemies, and now that Pandora's box is open, it's coming back to bite them in the ass. Here's what unites this entire conversation. You need to be valuable, not as a person, but as a worker, and that doesn't mean being a pushover. Being valuable means that you don't give up your value for free. It also means that if you get laid off or restructured into a dead-end position where the company hopes you'll just quietly vanish, your value means that you can land on your feet with a new job or even start your own business. Simply stealing from your employer by not working well on the clock is a fast track to getting fired because you're low value. But if your employer abuses you, there are absolutely other organizations that will recognize your value. 
You don't have the right to a cushy do-nothing job, but that also doesn't mean you have to give up the goods for free, you know? I guess the final piece of advice I'll leave you with is this. Don't record your layoff interviews and go viral with them, guys. That's just tacky. And I promise you, you have made yourselves unhirable. That is the all or nothing move. Either you are so ridiculously high value that it just doesn't matter, and you're gonna giga chad your way through it anyway. Or you have instantly made yourself so low value, you might as well just give up on ever having a professional career. And by the looks of these bitches, I think it's more the latter than the former. Oh, one final thing here at the end. You know that LinkedIn girl who went viral last year or the year before, working that cushy job and making TikToks about it? The one that I used as the thumbnail for the video that I talked about it? Just in case you're wondering what happened to her, yeah, she's, uh, she's also moved on. All these women who are jumping around these jobs, they're just staying at the associate level and never really making it anywhere, just going from company to company. Probably because they're not actually bringing much value to the company. Anyway, that about does it for me. If you're watching this video on Premiere, you should drop by my stream because I'm streaming tonight. Come and say hi, guys. All right, I'll see you next time. I love you.